there is a very important question generally i ask ki how many of you think that you want to do i mean you want to start your enterprise all alone and you know build a team down later like i did i started all alone and then you know built the team as i went along and then made some of my senior guys as co-founders and stuff like that but i started on the journey all alone so that's one way of doing it uh, the other way of doing it is to get a team right at the beginning you know uh, uh, get the whole plan done you know divide whatever uh, labor and divide whatever you know equity you know the infosys model what i call as seven eight people coming together deciding to form a company i agreeing on something and then starting a company so how many of you uh, quick show of and how many of you want to do it all alone start all alone on your way and build you know teams going ahead just raise your hand okay yeah i can see yeah ananya vinayak joshi oh vinayak joshi is also wants to go all alone <laughs> okay so that basically means the others are looking for a team and uh, stuff like that usually that is the case if you ask class of 100 people i think 20 people would probably want to uh, go it all alone and 80 people would still find a lot of comfort in uh, you know in in doing this with a team uh, you know the philosophically entrepreneurship is a contact sport right i mean it's like uh, it's like soccer football why because you know to score a goal you really need to pass the ball create those moves and uh, then be able to do that uh, it's not like an archery or it's not like uh, uh, you know rifle shooting or table tennis that you can play all alone and still win a championship but i want you to start thinking this in the indian context versus the uh, you know the global context so global context usually you see a lot of founders co-founders bill gates and you know whatever his whole team of 16 people started microsoft uh, larry page sergey brin two of them started uh, uh, you know google uh, mark zuckerberg on the other hand practically started it all alone of course a lot of controversy as to what happened to his uh, other co-founders but uh, more or less like a solo entrepreneur elon musk okay in his initial venture at paypal was with peter thiel and the group but later on kind of practically is doing it all alone so building a team of course he has a team down but you know you see elon musk as in the indian context uh, if you really look at uh, uh, success stories of people coming together and building a uh, great enterprise is only probably infosys to a certain extent seven eight people Uh, not related to each other uh, you know came together professionally formed a team formed an enterprise uh, most of the times you see indian big companies you know are generally solo founder led you know, you know mukesh ambani at the top of reliance industries or sunil mittal at the top of uh, uh, bharti airtel so we are typically uh, what uh, you know in the indian context we have this uh, Uh, the feudal mindset if you want to call it you know for lack of any good word is that you need that one strong leader at the top to you know uh, get things going uh, we rarely kind of you know uh, look at teamwork to start up it not that there but if you look at zero da probably you know brothers coming together so more or less it's like the same person even in the case of flipkart if you really look sachin mansal bini mansal not related to each other two people came together built a good company but you know, end was not uh, uh, very very happy zomato same case dipinder goel had a couple of co founders starting off with but while the company tried scaling up or reaching at the top you know there were obviously uh, disagreements and people moved out and so in indian context generally we have this you know big you know big big founder big founder big big daddy founder as uh, as the guy at the top and then you know others so whether it's a political party you see there is really one you know top guy at the at the helm of that political party and then all other like, you know take any any of our big leaders in politics today even in cricket we see this kind of a you know towering personality uh, overshadowing you know like ms dhoni is a 
classic example of you know a strong leader a guy who can do it everything you know a uh, great leader great thing but virat kohli tried that couldn't do it we usually end up in that virat kohli rohit sharma kind of a situation so the topic for today which is one of the topic which is closest to my heart is you know we have we have this whole thing of great product idea great technology you know great market opportunity everything there but to really achieve success for me the fundamental building block is not product not technology not opportunity not money while they all are important for me of prime importance is the team okay the team and we are talking i mean in the context i want you to understand what is the fundamental difference building a team and building a a team right a team is okay team is team every i mean everybody wants to build a team but what is it that you do to build an a team right so uh, let's start today's discussion uh, you know uh, you know when i if you can just move the slides to where we are today and you know uh, pick it up from there okay so we are here okay slowly inching towards uh, finale uh, you know we, we we covered a lot of topics in between of how ideas are formed what does it take to be a great uh, uh, startup you know discovering uh, some business models related thing how do you kind of uh, use design thinking to uh, build a product that your customer wants so, you know all those topics last five sessions are there we are today at session a and the focus is on building an a team okay a team and there is a, a difference i mean here we need to start thinking how do we really build a team of champions sharing my personal experience i would say uh, i did the i mean i i would have been very happy if i had a great a team to start off with you know would have saved a lot of time lot of effort energy you know if i had got a good team right at the beginning it didn't happen no regrets okay we did have an a team towards the end but uh, things would have been much much better uh, you know like i say saurav ganguly when he came as captain had a great uh, great set of people you know on whom he could uh, so there was a jawagal shrinath or you know uh, anil kumble is the sachin tendulkar you know all this great 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 ingredients of a team unfortunately couldn't win the world cup 2003 lost in the finals <coughs> uh, but that's history right i mean but same thing with probably uh, dhoni pulled it off i mean of course he had star players like yuvraj singh was there and uh, gautam gambhir was there tendulkar was there but not really didn't create that much of an impact especially going towards the end part of it but zahir khan obviously made a lot of uh, difference to his thing okay so we are here let's focus quickly on what some of the core concepts that we have regarding you know uh, building of the 18 so when i give you can just move the slide to the next one which which is our most famous slide i always call it as you know uh, and click on all the options tak 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 so you know yeah okay so right i mean good so yeah so we say that the sweet spot for a great enterprise is the uh, meeting point of you know uh, uh, looking at something that you know people want as a solution so there's a desirability there's a technology or the you know ability to build it the feasibility to do that uh, the viability of the business model that means you know you actually can make money doing that particular solution more importantly is the compatibility of the team the team that is there to kind of you know uh, deliver this part of it so it's a combination of everything why i call it important is because uh, in the indian context you know there are a lot of moving parts when you when you when you talk about team right i mean compatibility and you know we 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 need to have this uh, mindset that we all need to work in a team so i always say that and this is purely in jest okay that we indians are very good at individual sports no like boxing or now uh, you know whatever uh, rifle shooting we are great at we are we are we are, we are great at badminton now okay so all these individual sports we excel chess of course you know one great sport that uh, we've been we have had a world champion in it for um, boxing now you know women's boxing mary com nasrat 
and all these guys uh, are doing extremely good badminton we are doing good but when it comes to team sport and honestly cricket is not a team sport in the sense it's a sport that where the individual achievements add up and then becomes a team performance right but we are bad we are bad at football we were good at hockey at one point of time somehow we lost we are bad where we have to work you know as a team and uh, get to that goal part okay so maybe culturally we need to figure out why is it what prevents us from uh, doing this with our co fellows you know and it it starts right from the place where you are probably working together in today also indian organizations need a very strong hierarchical system you know of who is reporting to whom and whom you should be calling sir and you know stuff like that you know we have a very very ordered we try to you know organize it. we try, don't try to work in open ended teams where we say okay you know let me take up whatever i can do let me help somebody out there uh, when i need them to do kind of a thing so a kind of a difficult thing to manage especially in modern entrepreneurship because your uh, you know here you would need multiple facets of your personality at play over here you can't get away saying that i am very good at coding or i am very good at technology so i'm letting let me sit in the back end in the office and not not talk uh, to customers uh, or at all i mean i'm good sitting in a dark corner and coding and stuff like that no you can't have that in today's entrepreneurial ability you need to be multifaceted you need to be a people's person you need to be customer facing you need to have better communications when it comes to both written as well as spoken communication you also need to have great technical skills you need to have problem uh, you know uh, problem solving skills that you have. so let's do something you know very quick uh, let's kind of uh, what i should say uh, look at what we want to do as today's takeaways quickly next slide vinayak and this is a very large uh, you know menu you know build a vibrant world work culture and stuff like that but we are not going to get into all of these at this moment we're just going to touch on the relevance and the importance of why a balanced team is important you know co-founders and mentors one of my favorite topics how do you really take it up because you know we are all young right i was 26 27 when i started my enterprise i mean, didn't have too much of experience building something uh, from scratch stuff like that okay no support no no family background in uh, doing business okay uh, whatever little little uh, communication leadership skills was what i had got trained in in working with large organizations which kind of i'm still grateful to them today that they built this uh, on to me okay But more importantly we have a platform here that will help you reach uh, that things fast okay so next slide vinay okay so this is what the expert speak is right i mean that uh, these are some of the top reasons why startup fail i will not want to agree or disagree with all of them okay some of them really important uh, uh, are there for example you know we have this i have always said this product first or product centric approach will kill you right we will end up developing a google glass that nobody wants to buy or pay for uh, or a tata nano you know we start with a good great deal of good intention but somehow fail to read what the customer really wants and you know boom gone okay but what is more important unit economics yeah this is this is again a big thing because we try to kind of uh, you know somebody has told us at first get the market share and then everybody you know you can go laughing all the way to the bank doesn't really work that you know whatever i mean this so called new age e-commerce business model that you know start making losses and you know not losses humongous losses in the first uh, few years you know gather the market capture the market gather a lot of customers and then eventually start becoming so if you look at swiggies and zomatos of the world they're struggling now they're struggling on the unit economics a lot of time they given to be giving away free and stuff like that and today they want to build you everything they want to give you something called boxing charges they want to give you delivery you know partner charges and now they want to you know hide everything in in your bill and uh, uh, make you pay for it right so if you have been a great swiggy user zomato user you will realize that now you are actually ending up paying much more because of this convenience of getting which is fair enough but you know it's kind of not really working in their favor it's not that suddenly overnightly they will become profitable but what is more important and what are the two glaring things 
that come out of it. I think the next slide will make it clear, uh, Vinayan, is, uh, go back, sorry. The glaring things that, uh, you know, lead to early stage startup failure is incompatible teams. That means, you know, you have team in which one player wants to play football, the other player wants to do boxing, the third player, you know, wants to go on a hike, and the fourth one, you know, just is happy playing, uh, you know, computer games, right? And then you're thinking that, hey, yeah, what is the team I've built? I mean, completely incompatible. None of them want to do, you know, what everyone else is supposed to be doing, right? And of course, this very famous Indian inability to let go, okay? To let go and say, okay, this is not worth, or, you know, now I've reached a stage where kind of, you know, I can uh, sit back. And uh, so we want to hold those controls, you know, right. Uh, so every small decision making, whether it is, you know, going out and buying uh, uh, stationery for the office or, you know, going out and uh, planning the office party, you know, I want to get, because I'm the startup leader, I want to get involved into all this, you know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's kind of a thing. Okay. So these are two major things. I mean, I tend to agree with uh, this part of it because I have been through some some of it myself. Maybe I'm also guilty of not letting go uh, easily at uh, one point of time. Okay. So next slide, Vinay. I think uh, rather than the... Uh, okay, this is interesting because, you know, I, I want to bring your... Uh, my own personal experience as a early stage startup investor also might not, right? So obviously I, I just want to make sure that the investment that I'm putting up, you know, is going to be profitable. Okay. And I also know the fact that profitability is, is a shared thing, right? I mean, I can't be profitable and a startup is not profitable. It doesn't work that way. I, it's not that I will make money and you know, the founder will never make money. So everybody has to make money for me to, make money right so i understand that so that is why what do i try and look i look as is this something which is very very you know different from what is available as a solution today so is it really going to uh, fly in the market so is there a very strong unique selling proposition or am i saying looking at a very large opportunity in which i say you know doesn't matter you know the, the market is so big that eventually we will we will we'll end up uh, making a lot of money. So it doesn't really matter to me whether there's a differentiation or not. For me, what is very important, and this is what we're trying to highlight it out over here, that in an early stage future, if I were to invest money, or for that matter, generally, anybody who wants to invest money, they're going to look at the team. Okay. Solo founders may not give that much of a confidence unless the founder has, uh, you know, founder has... Uh, demonstrated earlier that he or she has built a great uh, company, you know, delivered on, on whatever was the KRAs, uh, has, you know, success, has, you know, shown that, okay, they have been successful in the past. Then I can probably put a lot of faith in a solo founder and, you know, look at the fact that, yes, yeah, he has done this before, he'll do it again, okay? Rather, if you come and tell me this is a team, we are there, we all are there, we've we known each other for so long, we work together, you know, he's hanging to hat, he is that. It give, it give me a fake, you know, uh, confidence that this team will deliver. Doesn't matter, you come and tell me that you're going to play football and tomorrow change your game and say, no, no, we have now decided that we'll play hockey. I'll say fair enough. But is the team remaining the same? Yes, the team is remaining the same. So there will be pivots in your business, you know, something will change. What should not change is the team okay as far as i am concerned as far as most uh early stage investors also uh you know uh look at it and say this is what uh, it is so if you can just uh move the slides to uh this is all okay this i mean you can just kind of skip this up part of it okay so we have this one mentimeter thing uh Vinak, I think you'll, you know, kind of have to do is uh, of there's an open question for all of us over here. What leadership skills do founders need to have? What do you think? I mean, as a startup founder, what are those things that uh, uh, we should have, right? So Vinak, if you can just run this. Um, yes. So I have already 
So you just need to go to the menti.com and put this code. Uh, let me know if you want to. Uh, just yeah, just go to menti.com, put this code or scan this, and we will have results soon, which I will share. So um, yeah. We have four participants. Hi, Hitesh. I guess you've just joined us. Hi, Diksha. Maybe you can scan this and start giving us the answer. Just let me know which uh, question is coming. Is it uh, which leadership skill do founder need to have? Is it that question? I've also shared the link in the chat if there is any issue on that. And guys, uh, let's let me share the screen. All right. So um, it's which leadership skills do founder need to have? Strong integrity, quick decision making, empathy, know the business, motivator. Come on, we need more. Sir, uh, there are answers on the screen. Maybe you can comment on them. Sorry, I'm trying just trying to read it. Strong integrity. Okay, this is leadership. Huh? I'm here talking of the guy at the top. Okay, um, okay, know the business is the same as subject uh, knowledge basics, I assume. Communication skills, okay. I mean, we somehow love people who talk, right? I mean, we think talking is a great skill. Uh, uh, quick decision making, okay. People's skill, empathy. I think they're all related uh, to each other right people skill empathy okay good 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 let's move move forward yeah all, all of them are right there's nothing no right or wrong answers in this okay no right or wrong because i mean what can i say i mean everything is there you need communications you need what is most important i i mean we can always debate uh, i would say ethics or you know uh, the ability to have a very strong uh, moral, uh, uh, you know, leadership. I mean, we have realized that today people remember. I mean, if you want to, I mean, just look at say Gandhi or uh, Abraham Lincoln or something. I mean, they've been kind of uh, been leaders for ages, right? I mean, almost seventy-four years after they passed out, and more than hundred years in the case of Abraham Lincoln. So, for me, I think moral leadership, ethical. Uh, Trumps everything. Skills, of course, are needed. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, today you, what 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 business doesn't need skills? People skills in today's world again very important. You know, to be able to deal with the generational gap, right? I mean, so one of the reasons, uh, uh, you know, what we challenges that we face going forward is a softer company. You know, we're getting younger and younger people, and our you know. Uh, Unability to match up to their expectations or their inability to match up to our expectation leads to a lot of uh, chaos down the line. Um, if you don't have a proper, you know, system of doing that, I mean, Infosys is a great model. I mean, you know, they're still running a software company. They're still hiring graduates from this year as the leadership is at a very very senior level part of it. Okay, okay so let's move uh, to uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, the four pillars of startup leadership next. Uh, uh, I mean, if you ask chat GPT, obviously, I mean, these are very standard answers. You don't need intelligence. Forget about artificial intelligence to you know, come up with this. But if you can move to the next slide. <coughs> Shaping the future or... Uh, I don't know, shaping the future. Uh, 
I mean, it's a very great desirable skill, right? I mean, you need somebody who can define the future, right? I mean, Elon Musk is doing that. He's kind of changing the way, uh, you know, the future will change part of it. And, you know, I would say to a certain extent, Steve Jobs did it with some visionary thinking about products that were not even invented that way. Shaping the future is one thing, anticipating that future or getting that 30,000 feet view of what is going to come, right? You can't just wait for chat GPT to come and disrupt your, you know, your business model. You need to be aware that there's something called as AI, generative AI, chat GPT. There is all these chatters going on, right? I mean, it's not that chat GPT just fell in our lap. The people who are keen on the evolution of uh, uh, artificial intelligence and how it's just going to impact the future, uh, we're already aware of, you know, the BARD that uh, Google was working on or Lambda and chat GPT and stuff like that. So, you know, as, as, a, as a leader, you should be able to also look uh, into the future and see what is going to come. Good or bad doesn't matter, you know, the good or bad. Sometimes things just happen. For example, COVID did happen and, you know, there's no way anybody could have predicted that as a future. But those are, you know, um, uh, black swan events, as we call it, you know, happens once in a while, can't predict, can't do anything about it, right? But yes, I completely agree. Leading people, delivering results is very important. On a day-to-day -day basis, you should be seen as a leader who's doing it. I mean, you can't, I mean, it's like cricket, you can't just have one score of 300 in some match five years back and then still claim to be a great batsman, right? You need to consistently deliver uh, and look at the way we judge people, right? I mean, Virat Kohli went through a bad patch and we just started questioning his entire cricketing skills all the time. And when we do it so fast in today's world, like you just don't play for two matches and like, you know, you're suddenly kind of written off. Shah Rukh Khan, he's our favorite, I think, whipping boy uh, when it comes to, you know, performances and suddenly, hey, Shah Rukh Khan is out and then he comes and, you know, delivers one Pathan and now everybody's talking about him. So, you know, we tend to judge very fast and we, in turn, we'll also get judged very fast. So this delivering results is something that you need to be constantly ready to do that uh, you know, consistently. Part of the consistency, you know, I loved Rahul Dravid, you know, and I still love the work that he's de dealing today, you know, consistency is there, you know, you can bank on that guy. No wonder they called him the wall and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, what mattered was you could put your faith on Rahul Dravid. Okay. So, uh, can we move this uh, a bit further? To, uh... Go to the critical team members slide. Okay. Hacker, hustler, and visionary. No, not this, a bit next, I think. This is just an example of some discussion that we had. Just go to the critical team members. This is one uh, important, uh, you know, metric. Like I said, that if I was a startup investor, I would really look at a team to uh, who's going to be doing this stuff like that, right? I mean, rather than the opportunity or whatever technology or educational qualification, doesn't matter. Do we have the team uh, to do that? So, you know, taking that thing forward, I think this is very one important question that all uh, startup investors ask is, you know, okay, I mean, this is great, you know, opportunity is good, you have the technology and stuff like that, but who's the hacker, who's the hustler, and who's the visionary in your team? Try and understand this, uh, those three terms very clearly. Not necessarily these are three people. Between two people, you can have these three skills, or between five people, you can have this, uh, you know, uh, skills uh, that we talk about are very unlikely, but you know, 
within one person probably uh, you could have this uh, skill also right i mean bill gates comes to mind immediately as probably one of the guys who was technologically very sound great in terms of you know getting a business done hustling and of course had the vision to look at what i mean he was the guy who said there will be a computer on every desktop uh, you know every table every desktop that is how they call it desktop computers you know in the world at one point of time and all of them will run uh, a microsoft operating system kind of thing so who's a visionary visionary is very clear to define is a guy who can see into the future who's practically you know invented this idea the thought process of this startup you know is clearly committed to doing this the someone who has kind of woken up you know and said okay let us let us want to do this kind of thing and he's kind of looked into the future gazed into the crystal ball whatever you want to call it and said let us you know uh, do this uh, yeah ananya we can all be three like i said no there is a chance like right? i mean it's like can you be a wicket keeper a batsman and a bowler and win the whole match for the whole team yes you can be very unlikely that you know you have all three things present in there try and understand the skills maybe you are you are you know you can you can just explore yourself most importantly i tell startups you know in your team who's going to be doing that who has that vision to look into the future to understand what is coming then you need a hustler a hustler is a very important skill because in today's world nothing gets done uh, easily right i mean you can't just say okay you know i followed all the process and i got the stuff done no you need to kind of interact with people you know pull some fast ones you know do some high pressure selling over there go out and basically create that opportunity for you to hustle and get that opportunity done right get that foot in the door sometimes get that meeting across with some person get that critical employee employed from the you know competition to yourself over here diffuse a particular situation by talking to the authorities and do that so somebody who can you know is a slick uh, guy who kind of keeps on hustling and we do hustling all the time right i mean we in our life if you really look at it uh, i at least personally feel that uh, you know i like to hustle stuff like that and you know kind of uh, get things done at this point then there is a hacker a hacker is a guy who would come up with uh, a solution to a problem okay he will not get bogged down by uh, bogged down by you know processes or systems or stuff like that and say oh no this can't be done you know it's very tough we don't have technology i don't have resources i don't have people i think hacker is somebody who hacks a solution okay gets work done is kind of able to you know wire the system in the back end and make the stuff move that is what i call uh, a hacker is you see so hacker is someone you can suppose you are a visionary and you say okay this is my enterprise and i know i know where i am going i know exactly what is going to happen into the future and i have my eyes uh, focused on the future you will need somebody to kind of manage the day to day stuff like that right and in a day to day what happens a lot of hustling situations are there you know customers are not paying up or customers not releasing the order you know employees are acting smart or you know a supplier is not supplying you the critical component you know bank is not giving you the uh, credit that you are wanting so you want somebody to constantly go and talk and you know get get the thing and at the back end where you know where where everything is happening you need somebody who's keeping the you know keeping the engine rolling or keeping the you know uh, uh, production line rolling if you want to call it or keeping the software running up and stuff like that or keeping the restaurant food thing happening right the hacker is basically making sure that you know what with whatever resources that are available he or she can get the solution up and running good to have these three as three different people honestly this is a very uh, ideal situation ananya is talking of can it all be in one person no everything is possible right rarely you will get to kind of see so if you look at the typical google uh, story also so uh, we should understand that when larry page and sergey brin started it they kind of uh, were technically very sound about it and um, uh, they also had great funding you know day one to start off the what they lacked was the maturity to uh, move that needle and you know to that north star and say okay this is what we're going to do 
please understand the background of google google came up in a search engine business search engine business was not new in 93 94 okay there were already companies who had started the search engine businesses yahoo was one directory services excite alta vista ask juice there are about 7 8 search engine businesses that had already started and failed and here comes these two guys phd students out of stanford labs uh, you know with an amazing algorithm uh, that completely changes the game part of it but they are still 23 years of age right and 50 million dollar funding see amount of money and technical skills doesn't necessarily give you an organization building skills okay this is what i want to drive here so obviously they had to bring in a guy called eric schmidt eric schmidt was ceo of motorola he was 50 years of age when he came to google okay and now you just imagine a 50 year old guy of course he was hired professionally uh, by the founders and stuff like that because they knew at the end that you know these two people may be good technically very sound but you need somebody who can take this uh, uh, business to the next level so eric schmidt comes in at the age of 50 and what we don't know and then we see is what is the success right so this hacker hustler visionary thing works works for a, a, a part of it but like you know elon musk can come and change that whole saying that he's technically a very sound guy knows how to get his business done also has the vision of what the future is going to be whether it is you know space travel or whatever he's thinking about next bill gates He was the youngest he was the 17 year old guy in this whole group of early microsoft founders the youngest of them but he had all the requisite skills at that point of time to get it done whereas if you look at the infosys model okay so the visionary there is probably narayan murthy okay the guy who's 43 years of age uh, uh, you know when infosys starts okay and but he has the maturity and he's been the boss of all the other people colleagues of other senior guys so no they obviously treat him as a leader that okay is that nandan nilekani is probably 28 29 younger guy but great computer skills able to you know kind of build a solution uh, out of whatever limited resources and obviously you know they had people who could hustle their way through so the seven people team probably had all the three skills uh, put in uh, together over there okay so this is very very critical that uh, you know this is very very critical that uh, we uh, we should have this now tell me a quick show of hands again okay because two people only said uh, that you know we want to uh, uh, kind of uh, we want to kind of have co found we want to go it solo sorry so ananya and vinayak that is why i think ananya's question is relevant because you know she wants to go alone and she's trying to see if she can get uh, all the skills together ananya you can i don't know i mean you can but start thinking about this yourself as what are you really really good at okay because uh, it's great to think that you can be a batsman and a bowler and a wicket keeper all rolled into one will put the whole pressure back on to you because you know you are the only one who's supposed to be delivering the work now this is a question for the other members part of it. and if you can quickly go to the mentimeter thing you know uh uh So these are, you know, the typical how you manage, how you put a team, and you know, allocate work and all that. Matter. So it's an example. So let's do this again—a mentimeter activity. Again, I want to kind of pick your brains. Probably the two who have said they want to go solo don't matter, but if the others can say, why are co-founders important? Guys, I'll be sharing the results in a minute. Till the time, you can scan this code and enter, uh, scan this QR code or enter the code at twenty dot com. Uh, let me know if you want any help in doing that. If you want the link in the chat, we'll be sharing the results in a minute. Yeah. By the time we get a few results. And if you're uh, having some problem in doing this, uh, just uh, you can write your results in the chat. Although I'm sure uh, there might be no problem.
All right, we already have a few answers, so I'll share that. Okay, so what do we see here? It's um, one person believes in capital contribution. And there are four people, two each, in distribute load and peer support. No one believes that you need co-founders for business skills or technological skills. So, um, how true is that? So would you like to comment on that? Sorry, you were asking something. I didn't get it. So can you comment on the chart as in uh, they voted, uh, how they voted uh, the students? Yeah, I'm seeing the chart, right? Something to distribute load, peer support, uh, capital contribution. Yeah, right. It is why you need co-founders, right? I mean, you need to kind of say, you know, look, I can't do this all alone. Uh, I need somebody, you know, to help me out, manage it out and stuff like that. It's a good... It's a great human. See, we are a social animal, right? We are the only animals which kind of form tribes and, you know, settle down as uh, communities. A lot of other animals also do, but we kind of taken it to the next level and you know, build civilizations and going forward, uh, you know, this whole nation nation theory and, you know, clans and stuff like that, okay? race, clans, nations. You know, they're all, all, all resultant of our ability to work towards as teams and stuff like that okay so that's a basic human need that right? i feel that you know uh, in college also right we we we, we want to go out not I mean, we are hungry we can still go out and eat food all alone but you generally come along you know take some people along chat up blah 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 okay so uh you want to do that the social animals at the end of okay so and i'm just trying. Sir, I think having co-founders is fairly important, but it's very difficult for a founder to actually believe that a person you have picked will serve justice to you. Perfect, Ananya. You're right. This is exactly, I mean, I mean, this is what happens when you're also getting married, right? And somebody wants a life partner and co-founder. It's almost the same apprehension. What will happen? I don't know you. You don't know me. You know, how will I know that you are the right persons over there? So I'll, I'll give you some great uh, examples of... Uh, you know what can go wrong over here so hold that thought yes that fear is there i i think now i know where you're coming from uh you know, why i want to do it part of it. No, no, nothing wrong okay there's nothing wrong please understand i did it all alone so i can't go and do that. but i like i said if, if i were to go back and do it all over again probably i would get co-founders very early on because you know if nothing, any case, you have a shoulder to lean on and cry. Yaar. I mean, like, come on, things will not be good every day, right? Some something will happen, some shit will hit the roof uh, on some days, and you need you need somebody who will say, okay, come on, you know, uh, it's no problem, you know, it will work out. Don't worry. You know, tomorrow is another day, or tomorrow is another month that we are going to start off. Uh, so peer support is is important then. Capital contribution, yes, I believe capital contribution uh, is also important that you, you need to kind of, uh, you know, distribute risk, right? Because you're going to finally distribute rewards at the end of the day. You know, Bini Bansal, Sachin Bansal all made 600 odd crore rupees, right? But at the end of the day, they also put in their capitals and, you know, they were, there was also a risk mitigation out there when you have uh, more people. So if you look at the uh, Infosys holdings of the, you know, seven partners, uh, all of them were different. Probably, you know, Narayan Murthy had the highest percentage shares and, you know, some other people had lesser percentage shares. But that's what they agreed upon. And then they stuck it till the end. They didn't kind of, you know, quit. So, but of course, everybody got rewarded uh, very well. So, uh, you know, I think if you can go to the next slide, uh, I think more or less this is what we've been all talking about is why co-founders, okay, now, uh, Complementary skills is one thing, you know, sharing of workload is one thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, reduce salary <laughs> expenses, you know, as co-founders, you're not expected to take uh, uh, salaries. So, you know, probably like free free labor. So come together and let's work together. Maybe the next slide also is, talks about the same thing, uh, you know, uh, what to look forward. Okay. And this is, again, a very classic, uh, what I should say. Uh, 
this is again a very classic thing is to know what do you look forward in a sorry what do you look forward in a in a life partner right life partner or whatever for that matter anything uh, because co-founding is not just a small time arrangement right it's a commitment over a period of longer period of time much longer period of time right infosys i mean they are still co-founders you know they are not active nandan nilekan is the only chairman person right now because of some earlier uh, issues that they had but no, all in non executive roles but they are still uh, equity holders in their company right mike bill gates still owns equity in uh, in uh, microsoft maybe very less compared to what he started off with he still is an equity holder so this commitment towards a business just is not there for a very limited uh, period of time okay so see sam altman i, I don't know if you heard the name uh, he is now famous as one of the co-founders of open ai okay but sam altman is also famous as the guy who's uh, uh, co-founded uh, the y combinator uh, probably one of the world's best known uh, uh, entrepreneurship network okay so sam altman legendary guy uses a lot of cuss words in his uh, talks and presentations you can go out and check sam altman so sam altman i like the statement that he said he says you know co-founding is good but the problem arises between co-founders only in two circumstances and you know, this is what i want to tell you either the founders want different things for the company or they want the same thing for themselves try and understand what he's trying to say he says I, as two founders you want different things at the company you want to make it into a saas based model the other guy says no no i don't want a saas based model i want uh, some other model in which you know we can uh, get people to uh, buy the software and you know do the other way around not not offer it as a service over there will actually productize and sell that company now these are two different ways okay you want to start a restaurant your co-founder wants to start a cloud kitchen now you'll say you know both of them we wanted to do the same things but our approach towards the company was different right so either the the founders want different things for the company or they want same things for the example for example i want the position of ceo and my co-founder says no no i think i should be the ceo or you would say no no i want to be the face of the company my co-founder also feels that he should become the ceo this is the problem when according to sam altman that could lead to a conflict areas that me and my co-founders ideally what we should do we should have wanted the same thing for the company and different things for us right i would say okay fair enough you are good at customer facing so why don't you become the ceo i am good at managing technology so i'll become the cto okay or but we are very aligned as far as the company is concerned the company is going to be a saas based software so if you look at two different models then we have a problem if we're looking at two different things for ourselves then again it's a problem okay so you know co-founder alignment is very important alignment with the ventures vision that you know you agree on day one uh, you know um, what is it and technically it is possible right so you have a founders agreement so if you can just skip uh, to the founders agreement slide you know uh, that's yeah so technically it is possible so don't feel we feel awkward to discuss this right at the early stages of our um, startup right we say no yaar he is my friend he is my roommate you know i have known him for so long how can i be the ceo and he can be the you know whatever cfo C cto whatever it is they are all together we have this you know bhai bhai kind of a feeling over there my suggestion and uh, coming from experience uh, with all you guys is put it down on paper okay put it down clearly put it down on paper signed up you can make a legal agreement right it's called a shareholders agreement memorandum of understanding so when you incorporate a company all this paperwork can be done right so you know very clearly you can say i am going to be cap you know putting so much of capital you are going to be putting so much of capital okay these are the roles these are the titles these are the decisions this is the equity this is what will happen in terms of vesting vesting means when it comes to selling off our equity so you know there is a um, 
rofer clause which is the right of first refusal for example three partners are there and after five years one partner says no i'm going to australia whatever you know my in-laws are there and they want me to come and take care of the business so i just want to kind of give my equity now what will happen to that person's equity so you should have the right of first refusal that means he should be able to sell it to his existing co-founders first he can't just go and sell it out to some random person in the market who may pay some good amount of money to get that equity he should have the equity. so the rofer is a clause okay uh, which 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 you can build it into your uh, so same thing when it comes to exits you can have something called as a you know tag along drag along clause that means your venture the person was invested money in the venture fund now wants you to you know kind of uh, they because now they didn't don't see a lot of things in your business they want you to kind of drag you along and you know get you into some other deal and you know you must have seen this right i mean venture capitalists are notorious for doing that they take three four similar looking investments and then they, they try to kind of pack them all together and say okay now you can you need to uh, learn to work as a company it could be a very difficult situation uh, going forward over here like you know and uh, sad cases over there sometimes you may want to bring in another investor and your venture capital is not willing to so you should have something called as a tag along uh, clause which tells you that okay you no know, now that i have got another investor you also need to kind of make way for a new investor over so all these things and i'm going to come back to where who will help you understand all this because very, these are very fundamental uh, you know building blocks to understanding the foundations of a great partnership or you know co-founder in partnership okay what are the salaries what are the bonuses who owns the ipr over there is it vesting with an individual or is it vested with a enterprise as a whole how much of time commitment every partner is going to do are you all guys going to be full time into this or not so these are all you know difficult questions i would say at this moment difficult why because you know somehow because we are friends we don't want to talk about it we don't want to talk about bad things that are going, that may happen or not happen in the future so we try to avoid discussing that my personal humble request to all startups is do this in the sense you know discuss this get it and that brings us to very very important one how will you do it i mean you you want to play the good guy and uh, stuff like over there so here at this point of time i think the next slide that i think uh, um uh, you have is founder and mentor okay i in my presentation i had added one slide over here which i think i should do that but i'll quickly mention it you know just go out and uh, i'm going to probably type uh, two names over here okay i'm just going to type something i think everybody can okay probably go in your own uh, free time and you know study these two names ronald wayne and ashok avja ronald wayne was a very very early co-founder in apple he practically sold off his equity for 100 dollars he gave it back to steve jobs says i'm not i don't think apple will become a great company into the future you know i don't see a great uh, uh, you know alignment with what you guys are doing i don't believe in the vision but so here is my equity just take back give me 100 dollars back and so can you imagine what that equity would have been worth today if it just held on to those shares same thing is with a gentleman called ashok auja he was the eighth founding partner so we talk about infosys seven founders seven founders seven founders actually eight uh, uh, founders who quit very early at a very early stage he uh, quit because you know like i always say keeps initial days are very tough you know a lot of shit can hit the roof uh, kind of a situation so you need to take that call maybe you're just not cut out for it okay so these two guys i generally say i mean if you going to have co-founders like this then it's better to go the ananya and you know vinayak joshi way of wanting to do it alone thankfully they didn't derail the company okay apple became what apple is today and infosys became what infosys is today but be careful i mean you may have co-founders who initially agreed with you but you know lost 
faith in your vision, leadership, or whatever personal reasons could be anything. I mean, India, just I don't like the look on your face kind of uh, decision that you know I don't want to work with you anymore, or I don't think you're the right person kind of things. Okay? So, so that brings us to the end of what today's discussion that you want to move and move to the next slide of you know, and again, there's a nice mentimeter thing part of it. I always say whenever it's things that are difficult, you know, always try and get a mentor. Okay, somebody who's now mentor is a very what I should say <clears throat> misused or abused word also sometimes because you know go to LinkedIn and everyone is a startup mentor nowadays. Okay, and uh, great, you know, because at least the intention is there to help. But you need to be careful as to who becomes your mentor, right? And this is what makes a difference right so when you have a great mentor like when you have a ramakrishna paramhansa you can become a vivekananda right this is very important a great guru a great mentor can actually do wonders for you uh, when you're growing up your business okay so there's a quick mentimeter activity vinayak if you want to do uh, which is on the next slide is why do startups need mentor All right, guys, let us know the answer to this one. Um, I will share the link soon. I'll share the link in a second. In the time you can give us the results. And let us know what your point of view is to this. I will also share the link in the chat. The question is, why do men, startups need mentors? It's a simple question, similar to the last one. All right, we already have a few results coming in. I see you guys are slowly, slowly voting. So here it is. And then you're only able to see the previous question. How about you refresh it and it might work? I've also shared a link in the chat. You did? Uh, all right, just let me know. Let us know your answer in the chat then, what you believe would be the answer to this. Interesting. <clears throat> but how come only three people are participating in the... So one indicates what? One answer, is it? Uh, yes, sir. One indicates one answer. Okay, so chart for networking has increased. So Mentimeter has an interesting thing. You can uh, go in the uh, incognito mode and vote again. So I remember this because uh, our university had internal elections and uh, 200 students had to vote for one president, but uh, the president won by 6,000 votes. So uh, make sure you don't do that, guys. But uh, sir, would you like to comment on this? Yeah, so this is... Uh... It's good. I mean, I'm, I'm actually happy to, um, you know, think that people are not wanting mentors to raise funds for them. I don't know if it's just indicative of this group, but uh, wherever we, I have kind of, you know, 
talk to startups on why you want to mentor they think that mentors can open doors for funding which is very good which is you know what good mentors can do uh, uh should do i don't know will do but you know uh, should be able to do that you know given those uh, intros or uh, stuff like that so you know it's a good thing yeah so networking yes because uh, mentors obviously are supposed to be you know i mean you will not have a mentor who's your peer group right you have a mentor group who's probably senior to you uh you know so obviously as seniors you will obviously expect them to network raise stuff like that. personal coaching i don't know i mean i don't know what is your definition of personal coaching at this moment but uh, fair enough uh, you know yeah mentors can be coaches also to a certain and there's a difference right between mentors and uh, coaches and we don't want to get into a discussion because we have enough discussion on who's a mentor and who's a coach and whatever it is so coach is somebody i think plays with the team right so the typical football you kind of see uh, you know who's that who's the most famous football coach i don't know nowadays but uh, pepe guardiola or whatever it is so you know uh, those are managed they are designated as managers but they are actually coaches and they you can see them animated on the field and they are kind of involved into it or you see a very intense looking rahul dravid sitting and staring at a computer screen but he's involved into the game is kind of going through it ball by ball and you know kind of probably sending those instructions so that's a coaching that's like hands on with you wearing the same uniform on the ground playing along not playing on the ground but you know alongside with that is like coaches wear the same uniform right in football they wear i don't know fancy suits <coughs> with ties and stuff like that uh, there must be some history behind it but i'm not so sure but typically look at typically uh, in I mean, cricket coaches they wear that same uniform they give you a feeling that they are they are there with you at all points of time whether it's a team or that's coaching you know mentors can be coaches but like typically if i am a mentor i i don't want to get into a coaching because coaching becomes too much you know micro uh, tactical you know things that you know do this don't do that call me in the morning call me tomorrow evening no no it's not today even i am an advisor at iit mandi right i mean i'm like a mentor you can say that right to the whole program so that's iit mandi catalyst is like a startup it started 5 6 years back today is doing so i have, my role is there as an advisor so i i can only give my opinion and say i think this is how it should be done this is but i don't want to get involved into the micro working as you know whether you have sent that mail or did you call that person or did you make this kind of a thing so strategic advice yes so it's kind of counter intuitive to personal coaching right i can give very strategic thing saying that you know okay i think when you're launching this product you know this is what you may face as an issue or this is what you should be taking care of uh, stuff like that right so this is this is this is very important uh, can we do a quick next mentimeter because then we can link both those two discussions and then you know round it up as to what is the role that a mentor actually plays uh, in this so there is a i mean if you just skip the next slide and we'll come back with the next slide earlier uh, you know absolutely uh, sir we'll, and then we'll uh, say you know what are the attribute i mean you said networking and stuff but what are the skills within the mentor that you think are important okay. so i is the screen visible just let me know when it is yes you are so why do we need uh, okay which skills slash attitude are important for mentors to have this is the question which we have right now and um, try to have an answer for this i will also share the link in the chat and if there is any problem in accessing this you can write it in the chat um, i have shared the link but uh, we'll see if we can correct it so the question is which skill slash attitude are important for mentors to have and uh, you can This is a word cloud, I believe, and you can enter multiple answers. So go ahead. The link is for the previous uh, mentee. When the I link is for the previous one. Uh, I'm. I will try to share again. 
maybe there is some some issue happening There is some issue that I'm getting. Uh, you know, maybe you guys can start answering in the chat till the time. Let me know if anyone is uh, able to. Is anyone able to access it? Anyone? No. All right. So there is some issue coming in from the back end. Uh, I'll try to correct it, but till the time, let us know in the chat. The chat works fine. So this is, anyways, a word cloud question. So maybe you can let us know in the chat uh, what you believe the answer to the question is. Which skill or attitude are important for mentors to have? All right. Which skill slash attitudes are important for mentors to have? You guys can write it in the chat. You can write your answers in the chat. I don't see any answers. Uh, maybe the can write something. I'll, I'll start. Potential experience. Basic problem solving. OK. Empathy, all right. What about others? Saurav, Hitesh, Ananya? Come on. Tell me, tell me what you believe are the skills or attitudes that are problem that are important for mentors to have. And sir, what do you think about Deeksha's answer here? Uh, substantial experience and strategic problem solving. Is it a skill oh, which is obviously? I mean, it's very important that uh, experience is important. Experience in the area of work that you're doing. Uh, that's very important because you know what happens is uh, I've seen. You know, just take mentor because kind of he's been very famous for he may not have the alignment to do it uh, in your business, right? I mean, he may be very good at probably launching a restaurant or something like that. But in today's world, I think everybody thinks that mentoring is a very generic skill. For me, it's a no-no. I mean, I would rather get mentored by a guy who's been there, done that. I, mean, I don't care whether he's been successful, not successful. Greatly successful is a you know famous personality or something like that. Okay, that is why I have a slight problem with you know the the Shark Tank models uh, over you know, typically the Indian Shark Tank models because you try to judge someone for a business that you have not done it yourself, right? And you kind of throw away an advice or you know say this is not going to work, that is not going to work. Uh, that kind of uh, mm, uh, doesn't fly really with uh, me. Yes. So I like uh, Diksha's answer. She says that you know strategic problem solving yeah. is very important because what happens typically in a situation is you need to take certain decisions. Okay, and these are very crucial. Okay, uh, very crucial. For example, uh, you know um, whatever I mean. So let's assume even hire a, a senior level person. You know who's going to cost you a ton of money, and you know you you really don't know. If, you want to take that decision all by yourself, you know, the person's resume. Today, I think I give the least importance to a resume, okay? Even a LinkedIn profile for that matter. Because, I mean, sorry to say this, but, you know, people kind of oversell themselves 
uh, in a resume or oversell themselves on LinkedIn and stuff like that. For me, very important is a ref check. I would still want to, you know, talk to a person, see what it is, do this ref check, and then decide whether that person is suitable enough for me, right? So when I'm doing it with a um, with a with a startup, okay, with a star, sorry, with a with a mentor, I want the mentor to help me also identify something very very similar. Like that is that strategic problem solving is very important. Somebody should sit with me and help me get this whole thing sorted out. Empathy, yes, Vinay, is an important factor in anything that we do today, right? In today's world, if you really look at it, whether it is parenting or whether it is, you know, uh, taking community leadership or being a startup founder, being a political party founder and stuff like that. Empathy is, I think, a very core skill that people have realized that you should be having. Okay. So let's quickly go to the next slide. We'll quickly, you know, uh, wrap up this whole discussion because, you know, uh, we, we also have to give them some instructions on what they're supposed to be doing on the platform. Okay. So this is very important. I mean, uh, no, no, don't forget the mentorability part of it. Go, go back. Go back. Go back. Huh. This is, this is for me, the last slide that I want to talk about uh, today is, uh, like I said, mentor should have that alignment. I mean, he should also believe what you want to do, what you're going to achieve with this startup. He shouldn't have, you know, either too high expectations or too low expectations from you. And that is going to kind of kill the whole process, right? I mean, he doesn't believe that you are going to be, uh, you know, scaled out in such a way, then he's probably not going, not being able to kind of align with what you want to do. Like, it's like, you know, you want to do a full 42 kilometer marathon and he's saying that, no, you are, uh, you know, you can't run a hundred meter race, you know, what can you do with a 42 kilometer? Please understand there are two different things, two different skills, two different, you know, uh, preparations, two different activities altogether. Marathon running has nothing to do with a sprint, right? Though it looks running in the same place, but it's different. I mean, there have not been marathon runners who have done great hundred meter sprints or, you know, Ben Johnson did not run a marathon. He, though he broke the world record for uh, the fastest uh, hundred meter dash. Okay, so get a mentor who understands what it is that you know you are either running a marathon over here or a, a hundred meter sprint over here. Because two different things altogether. Of course, industry knowledge is very important. Somebody from the industry really adds value to uh, to the discussions or to the to the whole process. Uh, I always said mentors are somebody like if I'm mentoring someone, I'm probably like a mirror. I show the mirror in front of the person. If it is a bad news, it's a bad news. You can't just gloss over it. And it's not like, you know, oh, no, nothing. It'll happen. You know, don't worry. Maybe next time you can. I'm not a parent. Okay. I'm not here a parent to kind of motivate. If, if I'm mentoring you and you've done something, some shit that's gone wrong, let's all face up. Let's take responsibility. Let's move on. We don't want to also go back and, you know, kind of, uh, dig the grave deeper and stuff like that. Let's just move on, but let's do a, let's face it up. Let me say part of it. Okay. Technology expertise, mentors may, may not have, especially in the case of uh, fast moving technology is like, uh, you know, blockchain and stuff like that, because you need to be very relevant uh, over there. You know, uh, the mentor could come from a previous generation of technologies that we are talking about. Entrepreneurship experience, uh, yes, see, there are two types of mentors generally I look at, why, what I call as domain matter experts, right? So they may not be entrepreneurs, but they're very good at the domain that they are working on. For example, if you want, you know, really building out a scale out architecture, the person must not have, you know, done this himself, but he has obviously worked out with large organizations and helped build out a scale out architecture at the back end. So that is great subject matter expertise or subject matter mentoring. And then there is startup mentoring wherein you know the mentor has been a startup understand what startups are the dynamics of startups why startups fail what are the issues why funds are important how to manage uh, you know teams stuff like that so that that experience is there so when you're seeing mentors in your mind classify them put them in a box and say okay i'm going and it's it's always good to have multiple mentors okay see this is one great skill as uh, startup founders you'll have to figure out is you can have three, four people and chances are that those three, four people may give you three, four different uh, views. Okay. 
you need to have that smartness to you know combine what is good from each one not what is convenient okay don't don't take a convenient advice because somebody has given it and say oh yeah yeah i was also feeling the same so you know good that you told me this and i'm going to do don't do that if somebody is giving diverse opinion you know step back and say what is it maybe talk to all of them and figure out why they are giving diverse opinions and stuff like that but you will have to uh, take that final call on yours mentors according to me should also give you great introductions to either other startups businesses customers bankers funds government whatever wherever you are the thing that is needed if he or she can't help you with that then i would not call him or her a great uh, mentor okay so this is what we wanted to discuss broadly today okay not go deep down we wanted to talk about why the team is important what happens when you know when you have a good team what happens when you don't have a good team okay why mentoring is needed co-founding see team i think everybody agrees i think where the slight problem comes on is sharing that uh, throne and sharing that uh, crown with somebody else right we all want a great team but we're not sure whether we want to give them equal space and equal stuff like that but again like i said it's very cultural in nature take the help of good mentors look out for mentors vadhwani uh, foundation is a great place you know to get mentoring support over here uh, i was i started my work with the foundation 10 15 years back as chief mentor of course now there are a lot many more people uh, associated uh, with the organization we have a whole mentor platform that is available okay and uh, happy enterprising thank you so much uh, for patiently listening to whatever i had to share uh, for the day today so vinayak uh, chetan up to you guys now to guide them through what they should be doing on the platform and what should be doing next when we meet all right so thank you very much uh, what i'll do is i'll quickly give it over to chetan so that we can wrap the uh, what we how we can use the platform before 8:30 and you guys can understand it properly so chetan uh, maybe you can share that but uh, for now thank you very much sir and thank you very much to everyone who uh, has been attending the sixth session in a row now so fifth or sixth session i have seen the same faces the same people uh, writing in the chat and um, it's special to see people uh, come again and be active in again and again in these sessions so uh, over to you chetan now thank you vinayak thank you raj for that wonderful session um hello devendran saurav hitesh diksha and ananya uh, thank you for taking your time out this evening and joining us on this session uh, i've pasted a link on the chat for the wadwani community please open a new tab uh and uh please go to this page the community main page and here please go to your respective cohort which is think startup cohort 003 so basically i'm just guiding you to your journal uh where you'll have to fill out your journal for your uh, certification so this is really important um do let me know once you're in your cohort main page you can put a thumbs up in the chat it will be great so that i can proceed as well and if anyone is facing any trouble do let us know on the chat so that uh, we can guide you accordingly otherwise also if there are any uh, things which you need to talk about you see top right uh, on the left of the bell icon there is a chat button so you can send me anything in the chat i might take yeah. a little bit time to reply but i will reply for sure so uh, you can also put a chat in the group chat so you can go to your my journals here just click on it and you'll see your session 6 april 5th journal here so this time we have not put two different links for your session and feedback both are in one single form so you can just go to this a table form and just fill up your name
don't forget to fill up your name because this is really important. That's how we can figure out who's uh, participated in the journal so that we can score you accordingly for the certification. And then you have your questions here. So this is an optional one. Just choose the option. And uh, if you have anything to say, this is the place to write it. All right. And also, you can find your previous session materials here. Just a quick uh, recap. So if you guys want to go through them, just click on your session. The session recording is available. All the session notes are here, session materials. You can just go through them. And the same thing, if you haven't finished your previous journals, they're also available here. All you need to do is scroll down and finish them. Uh, do remember, this is very important for your certification. So, And also, please, guys, use this space. Go to the community, post. If you have anything in mind, if you have any questions, do reach out to our mentors and facilitators who are available on the platform. Uh, this is basically a gold mine. It's like it's in the palm of your hands. Feel free to use it. Get in touch with us if you have any questions. And we'll be happy to get back to you with an answer. So did anyone face any trouble in going to the form? Or if you are not able to go there, do let us know. If you fill the journal and feedback, It'll be great if you could give a thumbs up. Thank you, Saurav. That was great. All right, guys. So that's all I have. Uh, all right, right guys. Um, thank you very much. Uh, make sure that you fill the form, all the forms that you've been asked to fill your journal and the feedback form. And once again, thank you very much to everyone. Thank you to Raj sir. Thank you to the students who are here. Thank you, Chetan. Thank you to the Vadwani Foundation. And uh, see you in the next class. And as he said, if there are any doubts, if there are anything, you can tell us in the chat. And uh, once again, Saurav has an idea which he is working on. And sort of if you need any people to work with, feel free to put it on the common chat of the cohort. I have uh, sort of advertised you in front of the active students of this class. And uh, hopefully uh, we can talk later about it. Okay. So thank you once again. Thank you very much.